Goddamn right. Well, we got a real special one today, folks. We have a wonderful young feminist named Fawn who's going to explain to us how anti feminist and non feminist argumentation sucks by being completely subjective and offering no actual evidence that it sucks, which is in and of itself a subjective measurement term derived from a colloquialism. So yeah, this ought to be exciting, folks. Buckle up. So for whatever reason, you found yourself in an argument against feminism. But here's the thing. Your argument sucks. Get ready, kids. This ought to be a doozy. Let's start with the most basic shutdown against feminism. Feminism is sexist. You've come to this conclusion because you've been taught that sexism is basically the prejudice, stereotyping, and discrimination on the basis of sex. Well, Fawn, I'm just going to be a total shitlord, and I'm going to di read directly from merriamwebster.com. Sexism. Simple definition. Unfair p treatment of people because of their sex. Full definition of sexism. Prejudice or discrimination based on sex. Behaviors, conditions, or attitudes that foster stereotypes of social roles based on sex. I think you might actually have a basic grasp of what sexism is. But wait, you're going to prove me wrong, aren't you? Right. Before I even get into this, I just want to state that it's impossible for the oppressor to be the oppressed. That's the nature of oppression. <laughs> the oppressor <laughs> Bitch, what? Alright, right back to the well. Merriam-Webster defines oppression as 1A. Unjust or cruel exercise of authority or power. 1B. Something that oppresses, especially in being an unjust or excessive exercise of power. Two, this, a sense of being weighed down in body or mind, tied to depression. Now, I'm going to take a wild guess, but being able to afford hair color and a laptop and funny little beanie hats and being able to express yourself freely through the medium of YouTube probably, in some manner, indicates that you are not inherently oppressed. In fact, right now, I'm going to challenge you to name me a single right that women are not afforded in the first world that men are because well I've got time and I'll wait. Being offended by something is not the same as being oppressed by something. So bearing that in mind quite simply sexism is a form of oppression. I am not saying that men don't face negative stereotyping and I'm not saying that men don't face prejudice and oppression in society. However only oppressed people experience all of that as well as it being institutionalized and systemic. Things like the disparity in workplace death rates the incidence of violent victimization, incidence of suicide, family court and judicial sentencing biases, jailing men that legitimately try to pay their child support while still offering state subsidized housing to mothers that can't afford to raise their children on their own, the Duluth model for domestic violence, the lack of post victimization services for male victims of sexual assault and domestic violence, hand waving a system that punishes victims of statutory rape by forcing them to pay child support to their assailants. The destruction of lives, sometimes literally, due to rape allegations being churned into trial by media. The erosion of due process on college campuses. Affirmative consent programs that are unfairly biased to place all responsibility on the male, regardless of his own ability to grant informed consent. Legal definitions and tracking of rape that completely ignore non-consensual sexual acts perpetrated against males because they're not considered raped unless they're penetrated. It's hardly an exhaustive list, but it's enough to make my point. Here's how your argument wouldn't have sucked. If you're discussing sexism within feminism, it should be about how some parts of feminism could actually be really problematic for trans people, as well as people who don't assign to any gender and people who are gender fluid. A lot of mainstream feminism at the moment needs to work a lot harder on being more inclusive. Well then, let's examine one of the most popular examples of modern feminism being utterly and abhorrently sexist. The poison M&M's theory, also known as Schrodinger's rapist, in which 10% of men are posited to be rapists. Now, problem number one, that's an overinflation by an order of magnitude of male predation. Problem number two, it presumes that there is absolutely no female predation. And problem number three, it throws the following groups under the bus alongside cis-hetero males. It fires the gay men, the bisexual men, the gender fluid and male identifying, trans male after their transitions, trans female prior to their transitions, the elderly, the disabled, and the 10% of the global population that is prepubescent entirely under the bus. Way to go, feminism.
that's really, really, really inclusive. But men can get raped too. I can't stand this argument. You have to be a certain level of horrible to pit victims against each other, whatever gender. Also, I find that people use this argument a lot when discussing rape culture and actually they don't quite know what the discussion is about. I want to handle this the right way because feminism supports all victims of rape. You must be referring to the feminist culture that completely ignores males subjected to forced engulfment who are not counted as victims of rape. I assume you're also referring to the words of Mary P. Koss, who is one of the most prominent feminist researchers in the field of sexual violence. She is quoted as saying, Although consideration of male victims is within the scope of legal statutes, is it, import it is important to restrict the term rape to instances where male victims were penetrated by offenders. It is inappropriate to consider, as a vi rape victim, a man who engages in unwanted sexual intercourse with a woman. If you look at this group of men who identify themselves as rape victims raped by women, their shame is not similar to women, their level of injury is not similar to women, and their penetration experience is not similar to what women are reporting. What would I call a man being drugged and waking up with a woman on top of him with his penis inserted in her, inside her vagina? I would call it unwanted contact. That's super inclusive of all victims of rape, Fawn. But in the context of why your argument sucks, we are fully aware that men get raped too. We are not ignorant. What we were actually discussing was rape culture, so not the act itself. Rape culture is when you ask victims what they were wearing. Were they flirting beforehand? Asking if they possibly had too much to drink. Whilst anyone can get raped, rape culture predominantly affects women. Men do not get asked if they were showing too much skin. Rape culture is currently ingrained in society. There are people that would never rape anybody, but sometimes their actions and sometimes their words might contribute towards rape culture. So, I'm just going to leave an image up for, well, I don't know, about 30 seconds, so that we can all reflect on the fact that men are never told how lucky they are to have sex with a woman, or how men can never be forced or coerced into having sex with a woman against their will. Because, obviously, only women could ever be forced or coerced at any point, at any time. In fact, I might put up a couple of images just to point that out to you, Fawn. Here's how your argument wouldn't suck. Every single rape prevention tip is geared towards people being in charge of not getting raped. Not teaching rapists not to rape. So there's the big problem. The other problem in that is that most of these tips are aimed at women. With colour changing nail varnish for example. There needs to be more done to prevent rape for everybody, such as those glasses that change colour when they detect a substance. That way everyone can be safe. What you appear to be missing here, Fawn, is things like yes means yes laws, which have been passed in multiple jurisdictions across the first world. These laws assume that men are the only individuals capable of retaining any ability to grant informed consent and women are not capable of exercising any form of sexual agency after any level or exposure to intoxicants. In fact, there have been multiple cases in which men have been ejected from universities because they were as drunk or drunker than women that they had hookups with. Well, the women were in no way, shape or form punished. Well, that's just my opinion. Before any argument, you're going to have to show that you know what you're talking about before your opinion is valid. I can tell you that I think socks have emotions. That's just my opinion. It doesn't make it true. So instead of actually providing any citations throughout the entirety of your video thus far, you have instead subjected us to your opinion. Well, that's just your opinion, man. It's just your opinion. I am so sick hearing about feminism. Shocker, so are we. Please help us not have to talk about this all the time. Not only is this a straw man fawn, but the reason why non-feminists and anti-feminists are tired of hearing about feminism is because we're tired of hearing about sexist air conditioning, manspreading, pole hogging, how both wanting to give your girlfriend an orgasm is sexist and how not wanting to give your girlfriend an orgasm is sexist. Really, it's just boiled down to a bunch of feminists looking to have a row. Well, I'm a woman and I don't find that offensive. This is quite a hefty topic about internalized misogyny and that is a whole other video. Your argument sucks because you do not speak on behalf of all women. Neither do I. Neither does anybody. Except maybe Beyonce. When you say this, you're choosing to ignore the negative ramifications that this particular thing might have on other women. You may even be overlooking the negative ramifications this could have on you. Either way, it's a really selfish argument. I can't tell you how to feel about things, that's up to you, but... Don't throw everyone else under the bus in the process. Nobody speaks for all women, and all women should be empowered and have agency, except when they don't agree with me, which means that they must be self-loathing. Yeah, but what about men's rights? 
Men already have all the rights. So that explains why all of these countries are climbing all over themselves to put in effect laws that protect males from infant genital mutilation. And that also explains why the last time women were drafted to fight a world war was, oh, that's right, never. I think people use this argument a lot because it's hard to see just how something affects your life until you don't have it. I'm middle class and white. I come from extreme privilege and if it wasn't for people talking about it, I never would have thought about it. Because when you're privileged, you don't have to think about it. Allow me to read directly from the Equality Act of 2010 from legislation.gov.uk. The protected characteristics are age, disability, gender reassignment, marriage and civil partnership, pregnancy and maternity, race, religion or belief, sex, and sexual orientation. Which means that there is no class that I can fathom that does not have all of the rights accorded to it exactly as men do, exactly as women do. In fact, I believe all groups are currently covered. Also, men's rights movements that are around now don't even care about men. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. And here's why your opinion sucks, Fawn. The quality of your citations are absolutely, well, I was going to say abysmal, but they're actually non-existent. Being fair, any movement that sets out to help people is a good thing, right? The problem is the men's rights movements do not support male victims of rape, they do not support male domestic abuse victims, and they don't support trans men. I suppose that explains this screen cap of Google demonstrating exactly how many times it was non-feminists protesting against services and discussions about male victims. Do you know who do support them? Feminists! Before you go throwing stones about people not supporting trans men, you should probably deal with all the TERFs that are running around in feminism, making life difficult for all members of the trans community. Feminism is ruining movies. Slash series slash comics. This argument gets rolled out every time something gets launched with women in it. The reason this argument gets brought up is because of things like Anita Sarkeesian saying everything is sexist, everything is racist, everything is homophobic, and you have to point it all out while positioning herself as a pop culture critic. This also comes up frequently because of the overusage of the Bechdel test to complain that everything is anti-female. Here's how your argument wouldn't suck. Just injecting female characters into a film or a TV series and not spending the time developing their characters or even writing them not only ruins the movie and the TV show, but also puts a massive hindrance in women in the industry and it's crap. Because that clearly worked out well for Joss Whedon, who's renowned for being able to write strong, powerful, in-depth female characters. And it worked out incredibly well, what with all of those feminists bitching that Hermione should have been the actual hero of the Harry Potter series. That means I can hit girls, right? Don't hit anybody! Why do you want to hit people? Is it like really hard to live, restraining yourself from hitting people all day? You're using this argument as a quick way to put feminists in their place. To make them think that this isn't actually what they want. The other thing is that you're already hitting us. In the UK alone, 1.4 million women and 700,000 men are suffering from domestic abuse. Congratulations, Fawn. You've raised a mighty big straw man there. He's looking really big and healthy. Unfortunately, he's also a straw man. There's been nobody who's actively wanted to endorse hitting women in any serious manner, MRA, feminist, or otherwise. However, you're ignoring the fact that in reciprocally violent situations, the perpetration rate is actually roughly 50-50. It's just that men are frequently forced not to report because of social conditioning and social stigmatization. Not all men. If we're discussing something about men and it's not something that you have particularly done, then that's great. The reason why your argument sucks is because you have to understand that many men have done this. A majority even. It's always sucky to have to acknowledge that something that you're a part of has bad bits, but that's just life. So stop driving conversations back to you because it's not about you. You're right. It's not about the male in question. It's about trying to paint as many men as violent, predatory thugs as possible in order to justify oppositional systems theory and the usage of pseudo-Marxist narrative in order to put all men in a monolithic block that can be judged as a single collective whole, enforcing collective guilt on them all. The thing with all these arguments against feminism is that if you wanted to have a proper discussion about it, you would have googled it and done your research, but you didn't, which makes you an ass. I didn't mean to attack anyone in this video, I just wanted to show you just how ridiculous these arguments sound. I've done my research, Fawn. In fact, if you check all of my videos, you'll find that I've done a considerable amount of research and a considerable amount of citation related to the videos I produce. In fact, 
It's well beyond anything that you've managed to cite here. But thank you for playing. I appreciate the time and effort you put into putting together your opinion, man. I'd like to thank Fawn for all of the effort she put into this video because this has been one of the easier videos I've had to deal with. Because what is presented without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Thank you to Mr. Hitchens. For those of you that want to tell me what an asshat I am, what an oppressive shitlord I am, or would like to indicate how much they appreciate my asshattery, feel free to leave the links, leave a comment below, like, subscribe, or don't. I don't care. And no, I still don't know how to use annotations. But thanks for stopping by anyway.